just joining us, you picked the perfect time. Here it's the Travelers mid-game recap. Michael Kadire hung an ornament on that spruce tree out there for a two-run shot, and then Orlando Hudson heads up, goes first to third on a ground out, then scores on a pass ball. That's all the scoring. Twins on top, 3-0. And Francisco Liriano has been in control. John, you talked before the game about what you expected or what you thought Minnesota needed to see out of Liriano. How's that matching up? It's been fantastic. His composure, his mechanics, everything has been slow, meaning the game's not too fast for him. You come into a game and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get this out. I got to get this batter. And he has just been really in control. And the moment that I think the three and one pitch to Tex is the turning moment of the game. And it's allowed him to just relax and say, that three run lead right now seems like nine to nothing. That and came, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that came in the third inning, had a couple on. He got a fly ball out of Teixeira for the second out, then struck out A Rod. But you know, you mentioned the pass ball and the ability of Hudson to score. He got the third base um, because he was running on that 3 2 count. Good base running, twins base running, the way they usually play baseball. They haven't always done that in the past. Last year, Nick Punto and Carlos Gomez both hurt the twins with bad base running gaps. Nick Swisher is 0 for 2. He lined a second, wide out to left. And the count now 2 and 2 as he leads off the sixth. Set down 10 straight. Let us check in again with Craig Sager. Well, this is the Francisco Liriano that Twins fans remember from his rookie year in 2006 when he went 12 and 3 with a 2.16 ERA. But then he had elbow surgery. He's been trying to make a comeback ever since. Things were so bad at the end of last year. He had lost his confidence. He had a tired arm. They sent him back home for the Dominican Republic. He made seven starts in winter ball, was 3 and 1 with a 0 49 ERA, led his team to the Dominican Championship and the Caribbean Championship. No guarantee in a spot in the rotation. But here he is, their ace tonight. And he gives up a shot to Mark Teixeira into the corner. Teixeira with a double, with one down. Edwin Encarnacion took him deep twice. And Jose Molina. And that misses. Gave up three homers in his first 26 starts and six in his last five. As I mentioned, three against Toronto. Rodriguez takes a strike. One and one. A runner in scoring position for the Yankees who have yet to score. Off Liriano, who wants Joe Maurer to start again. And he flashes signals. Got the sign he wanted and missed. So two balls and a strike. You talked about the importance of the fifth inning, Ron, and he went three up, three down here. Now you're in the sixth. You got a runner on. With A Rod and Cano and Tims, who you've had trouble with coming up. Well, this is where the Yankees do their trouble, give you lots of trouble. Breaking pitch over. Two balls and two strikes. Again, Liriano, though, with the ability when he's behind in the count, able to spin a little slider on the outside part to get him back in the count. A Rod is 0 for 2. He's flying out, struck out his last time. Here comes the 2 2. Gets away from Maurer, who will not have a play. And Teixeira makes his way to third. First time the Yankees have had a runner that far in this game. Well, no chance for Maurer to make this play. Hard slider almost hits A Rod. He chases it down. But cannot get your body out in front when a pitcher throws that kind of slider. And those on deck circles are so dangerous. They're so slippery with the spikes of the players. 
Well, oh. he, he overthrew that slider. See if he can make the change right here and get it more over the plate and get a big strikeout with run around third. Fly ball would plate the first run. Uh, Ruck puts him on the corners with one down. Cano hasn't gotten it out of the infield in two trips tonight. And with Cano, you don't have the same problem against left-handed pitching. He had 13 home runs against left-handed pitching this year. That led the American League. He hit 29 on the season and knocked in 109 runs. And on the road, he hit 341. Nobody in the American League was better. And he's in a big spot on the road here in game one of the ALDS. Time called. Interesting how these hitters for the Yankees have slowed this game down. Stepping out, taking their time. The runners lead. Cano hits it sharply into right field. That'll score the first New York run in there at first and second. Beat him at 93, 0 and 1. Activity in the Minnesota bullpen. Jose Maharis is the lefty, Jesse Crane the right hander. Rodriguez at second, Cano at first. Tim's waits on an 0 1. And Liriano ahead 0 and 2. Interesting, in trouble against the guy that hits him very hard. Two straight fastballs on the outside corner. Very aggressive by Liriano. throw 96 pitches. Hudson cheating over toward the bag at second and Tims goes down swinging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven strikeouts now for Liriano and here's Posada with two down. Liriano trying to get out of the sixth inning with limited damage. The Yankees have gotten on the board. Teixeira doubled and came around to score on Cano's single. Nowhere near ball and a strike. There's five or six outs that you have to get over the course of a postseason game if you're going to have a great game. You talked about the pitch to Teixeira. Well, this is another moment here for Liriano. Yeah, the pitch to Teixeira allowed him to give up a run here and then pitch in this situation, Ron, to your point. He does have a left-hander up behind him. He overthrew that fastball, but every slider that's been good has been in the zone, dives out of the zone. That's what's given the hitters, the right-handed hitters, so much trouble because it looks like a fastball, and it's down at their back foot. Posada's one out of two. He's singled and was called out on strikes. This is inside, and this is... You look at this pitch right here and you can see that good movement but well off the plate. He hits triple digits on the pitch count. And now he's behind three and one. It's interesting isn't it with Jerry Crawford home plate umpire. That side of the plate if a left hander's up he'll give you a little leeway. If a right hander is up no way it's got to be right on the corner. Pitch number 102 is a biggie here, folks. The 3 1 lined over the glove of Hudson. That'll score a run, and it's 3 to 2. Thanks, 
Now here's Curtis Granderson. See Rodriguez having scored the second New York run. It's a 3 2 game in the sixth. When you're in this situation, you pretty much know the sense of the game that this is your last inning. And you go, I just got to get this out. I got to give my team the lead. I've done my job for six innings. I've got to get it out. And you start grinding really hard. The spring in his step for CC Sabathia in what is now a 3 2 game. Anderson with a count of one and one. Check. Two balls and a strike. When you start to get tired and you're in pressure situations, most young pitchers try to caveman baseball, power their way through the hitter. Much better to locate your pitches. Absolutely. And this is when you start the negative type thinking starts creeping in if you haven't had the experience to go, okay, no big deal. That ball's hit a towering shot to right field back to that wall and it's off the scoreboard this game is tied and now the Yankees what an inning have taken the lead four to three pitching coach Rick Anderson trying to comfort Liriano so Jose Mejares takes over here in the sixth As you look at his numbers, real good job coming into this year. Started off a little shaky. He's been really good in the stretch where he did not give up a run for a lot of appearances. He's got to really, really get this out right here and reset the focus, the crowd, the energy. Everything's been zapped with that one hit right there with two outs. Randerson is at third. Gardner takes a strike. Gardner has walked and struck out. You know my notes before the game I you know I made a mental note saying you got to take care of the left handers if you're Liriano you all must own the left handers and tonight he did not in key situations Cano and then Granderson he was so tough on left handers all year you just kind of assume that he's just going to continue that mode and big hits by left handers in this inning and you have to be careful here with Maharis on the mound against Gardner not averse with two outs to lane a bunt down. He's the eighth Yankee hitter in the inning. That ball down low. It's not a sure thing if there is a pass ball or wild pitch in this ballpark. There's that limestone backstop, and the ball can rocket right back to the catcher. Runners really have to be aware. Granderson is that runner at third. The pitch to Gardner. Three and one. You talk about a restless feeling in this ballpark right now, which had been a three nothing lead for Minnesota erased here in the sixth. It's fouled on the left side. And the count full. You almost feel, Ernie, that the fans here are the, oh no, not this again. But this is what this Yankee team does. They've seen this movie before, but there's a there's a long way to go in this one. Only the top of the sixth. Really bad for Gardner. He's a tough out. Hit 277 this year. Stole 47 bases and great guy to have at that bottom of the lineup as you turn it over. Too short. Hardy's got to hurry and gets him by a step. But what an inning for the New York Yankees. 
Highlighted by this shot by Curtis Granderson that scored two. Yankees by one.